Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. It's been two more days. I This time of year, grandkids are graduating and then for the last several months we have been mentoring some high school students here into the studio, showing them what graphic designers do and what artists do and stuff like that. And so they had a big presentation yesterday at the high school and so we went over for that. So it's been two more days. I've been trying to finish up this hawk. This hawk is, uh, I've been trying to paint him for you guys for about a week now. Wind and everything else. But let's get into this. Okay, so he's nice and thoroughly dried. And I set out some new colors here. I'm going to just wake up this area. This is one of the things, since I haven't looked at him, I didn't get to look at him yesterday and stuff. I'm going to wake up the area here with uh, a little bit of extender not put it over his whole thing because i want to leave this dry down here but see how that just kind of and i just love to look at the clouds the colors in there and uh, see how it all goes just a little bit of extender so it gets my eye used to seeing this is what it'll look like if you put extender on the surface i do this sometimes just to see what it's going to look like as it's going to be varnished and stuff because it'll take it to the the look of what it is when it's varnished so i just like to do that so that'll give me and get my eye used to seeing him again and and uh what is and what's my goals and stuff are here boy i love that depth that's right in there this extender is there it's just see the different rates of it soaking in there a little bit but that's that came out pretty good that came out pretty good so now we'll set that aside here we're going to come down here now it's dry down here so i don't put that extender where i'm going to work uh, i do sometimes and you'll see me in some of the other videos and stuff and i do um i'm just not going to at this time um i'm going to come down and start to work on his legs and again i have this uh um larger uh bit of him there uh, you know, up a little bit and i left a little bit of paint just in case you haven't seen that, I left a little bit of paint here in one of my brushes. And so I just used a hand cleaner. This is a hand sanitizer. Became real popular during COVID, didn't it? And see how it just cleans out the, it instantly cleans out the color and stuff on there. Because it's 60% isopropyl alcohol, which is the the ingredient that breaks the binder of the acrylic paint. So, and you can see, and I could use it, let's just say I want to clean up my handle a little bit. I don't know why I do this because I get paint all over it again, but you can just put it on there and just rub it and it will start to clean up your handle and make your brush look, you know, new again. And a lot of people ask me, um, you know, about brushes, brush care. Um, I'm absolutely horrible with brushes as far as brush care. Um, as you could see, <laughs> I had to leave my stuff in it, but, um, you know, you, you don't have to worry about it with the alcohol. You can always clean it out. Uh, and, and then sometimes it's like this one. You can see, maybe you can see that the tip doesn't have that much of a chisel anymore. It'll come back together when I put some paint in it, especially if I put some more stiff paint into it. It'll come back a little bit closer to its chisel. And so that's, and then, so that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. But you can also, you know, you, you want to, you know, put on some hot water just to it just starts to boil. Soak the brush in there for a few minutes, lift it out, and then press it back together. It's like us when we take a shower and our hair is everywhere. Go take a shower. All that warm water softens everything, puts it all in, and then, um, you know, you can uh, you can shape it back again. And so it a little bit of paint will help shape it. You know, there's there's other methods that I show you in other videos to do that, but you can always put them in hot water. That will not completely fix the brush uh, forever and ever and ever. But, uh, you know, for me, I like old brushes. I don't like the, uh, the super fine, sharp chisels, only when I'm working around like his face and stuff. But that'll help you a little bit for some of you that want to do that. I'm going to take some yellow oxide here. This is my number six flat brush here and i'm going to put in some yellow oxide we're going to go brighter than this but this is kind of a median tone for his claws here so we'll push this in right here and i'm going to put it on pretty thick um this is a forward part of his body textures into our paint now really help us bring things together and forward so we want to start to get some of the uh, you know that those textures and stuff in there two claws come into the front one kind of wrapping around 
the back. Here's this one right up over here, right down through here. And the, the claws on these things are magnificent. But sometimes, I, you know, in a lot of them, I fade them out and uh, I don't paint them that often because they, they tend to... Uh, take away from what we did in some of the other, you know, what we're doing in some of the other parts of his body and stuff, which I don't want this to be about a painting about claws. I want it to be about him. So I'm going to take up a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet right into some of this yellow. This will make a nice dark color. A lot of times I like red and blue as well. Uh, this makes nice grays and I can change the temperature because the blue will appear very cold and the uh, red very warm. But we'll use just the, the dirty little chisel here to uh, give the, the feeling of the claw here. Right there, one coming down this way, right up onto the chisel. And I'm not going to, again, I'm just doing them kind of quick right now because I have to put the um, the branch in here. So, and all of that's going to change everything. So we're just going to make a quick statement here, just so we know and we see. And this little claw curves right here on him. There, like that. Okay. And then uh, let's just take some of this, add some white to it. This is beautiful grace. Maybe a little bit of the burnt, uh, burnt sienna and yellow. So yellow, yellow oxide and burnt sienna. These are beautiful grays here. A mid-tone probably around the value five or six here. And uh, we'll just knock in some of this branch here, right up by negative paint, right up to the claws here, just like that. Okay, and, and vary the tone now, vary the tone. We'll get this and we'll just kind of let this diminish off to the side here. Hey, sometimes, you, you know, you see me in other paintings, I just, just whisper it off and let it fade away, which is great. Um, boy, that just kind of matches the color of that little water here. That just kind of matches the color of this uh, branch really well. But I'm going to want to incorporate, because what? What's the biggest thing, guys, in, in all of our painting? Okay, and you're all, you all should be you all should be answering me right now. <laughs> What's the biggest thing in all of our painting? This harmony, right? So we and right now this color I'm using, even though it's matching pretty much exactly what that branch is doing there, it's not very harmonious to the rest of the painting. It's a little bit too reddish and stuff like that. So I need to bring in some of his colors stuff down into here to bring them in. And then I'll bring in some of the colors that I use back here, the blues and the burnt siennas and stuff. Uh, you know, maybe that's would be a good shadow, the blue, the burnt sienna right down in here. Some of those, uh, colors a little bit heavy to the burnt sienna that you see in the back mountains but now a little bit darker and we'll use that for some of the dark uh, marks and stuff like that here on this branch and I'll be using a lot of paint a lot of paint and don't always mix it up real well see I'll just tap it and stuff here because this is what's going to give you that look of bark and I tend to hold my brush a lot of times flat like this when I'm painting trees and bark and stuff so that I can get some different um, colorings coming out for it uh, different you know the the different parts of the brush hitting it and giving uh, different textures looks of different textures and stuff let's uh, take some light maybe a bit of yellow into this. Now, you can also, so this would, I would, you know, with the brush, if I wanted to continue to brush, this is what I would do, and that would start to build it. But you can also take your knife, take your, your knife, and I love to do the knife, especially when I'm up in the front of the painting, because, you know, we did the knife back there, and I showed you some of that, but the knife up into the front of the painting is really nice. See, I just, I'll just model this. See this right through here? Just grab the colors, don't mix it up real well, and then we'll start to just pull and push this down right into here and start to add some of those colorings. We can even grab some of that initial color there and just add those. The knife is such a great way. See, I just slide it, sometimes pull down 
sometimes you just pull up and don't worry about getting into him a bit his claws we can we can change some of that let's get it a little lighter model this up see i always leave some of this if you didn't have enough of this other color to help model it go mix up some more you need to have some of this so it models here okay model means that i you're you're kind of incorporating I always oh it's like um you know it's like um i like to envision it like marbleizing right we don't touch it so much that the color mixes so well that you lose that marbleized quality of the color you don't want to do that so you know so we'll just put some of this light down and you can put in the the uh, uh, veining that you would see in the uh, uh, you know in between the bark and stuff like that you can scrape through like this which will give you a different look you know to some of this just kind of pull and scrape you can hear me scraping on the surface there and see this is what I want this modeling here which will give it the look of that bark stuff on that on that um, maybe a little more burnt sienna and blues here more burnt sienna and we can test and push up to uh, get that good shadow in there work this around a little bit you can use this to like if you want to create some of those bark lines you know that are you know that you'll see into the trees here I mean into the bark these lines here to give it the look of the you know different lines of the bark and stuff here sometimes you do it with round brush but you know really i love to do it with the uh with the uh, knife the knife just it's just such a natural look that's why i like to see i love that now it's going all different kinds of directions you see and part of it is if you've noticed i'm painting pretty quick painting pretty quick i have to do that because if i sit down there and you know you'll see some artists and i really appreciate them and some of the greatest masters they'll look and look and just go like this and put that in there and it, it just looks magnificent because they're thinking a lot about it and if i'm doing a real super detailed painting or towards the end of the painting i'll do that but i have found with myself that i am a left brain painter that will play with it to no end if i give myself any kind of time so I paint stuff generally pretty quickly so that uh, I don't have time to play with that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I, uh, that, that's what I know about myself. So I can come in here and, and like I say, I can give some darker and let's put a little bit more of a shadow, maybe even like a bit of a cast shadow here. I can just pull down and across like that, pull that in and we have that other little bit of bark here some burnt sienna some blue some yellow here that we had this other part that was going to come down here like this here another little part of it of it a little blue burnt sienna right in here and just quickly say bark you know, I love that. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, I always told you about some of the palette knife painters. I watch every single one of his videos. I don't paint like him at all, but I watch every single one of um, his videos. Richard Musgrave Evans, the Australian painter. That because I just, I, I love his approach to painting. This casual nature and these huge bright colors that... Don't always appeal to me, but boy, they appeal to a lot of people like my daughter. She just absolutely loves the power of, of his paintings. And they're, they are magnificent. But, I, you know, and using a lot of his doom, pull through, pull these colors through. And he uses gigantic painting knives. And, um, I mean, you know, some of you have written to me, yeah, he's really great and, and stuff. And and um, some people don't like it and stuff, but the you got to appreciate the techniques of it it's just that guy is just magnificent so then i can come back and just soften a few marks um you know give it a little bit more of a natural look to it if i want uh increase maybe a little bit of the dark back here through some of these 
other marks, a little bit of blue, pull down some of those other, you know, marks and stuff, those blues and stuff down through there. I want to um, take some of this yellow and light here, some of this, and uh, let's just uh, pull down to give the look of some of the grasses that we'll eventually have in here. And keeping it a little bit soft, but just some some movements, some horizontal movements, and then some grass, you know, just ideas of these vertical movements here, which will give the feeling of the grasses here. Here we go. Just right in there. I, I can do some more of that with the brush, but it's uh, just creating the feeling of it. I'll, I'll adjust it a little, a little better, but it creates the feeling of it, if that makes sense. Hey, I do like that. Maybe a touch of the lighter modeled, a little bit lighter, hitting this edge. Choom. There we go. Maybe pull a little bit of that color down. And again, you can restate some of these little dark lines and edges of bark you can go in there and put the shadowing of the bark and stuff like that i mean like you know i used to and i i don't anymore but i used to uh really get involved into some of the shadowing like i take the blue burnt sienna like this and i would come in along that shadow line and then you would paint in some turned bark edges here and you know it's and tap that around and tap but now i do it more impressionist style which i like but i would go in and just refine some of that and and sometimes you might take in so i look at all of that and then i also look for streaks of color like maybe a boom and i would come right in here and go boom let's just put in a mark of burnt sienna which takes that burnt sienna from him up here right down into this particular uh, branch and see that just adds Quite a bit. It carries that color, that color that we want there. And uh, yeah, it just, um, and there's just a, a, a lot of ways that you can work that. And the problem that I had for many years was I would work on this thing and, and uh, you know, I'd try to make it absolutely perfect. And you don't need to. You don't need to. Let's take some burnt sienna and some of this yellow and uh, the yellow oxide and let's create the shadows for his feet here, the shadow lines for his feet, claws, things here, where we see the shadows, the form, this would be called considered form shadows because I'm painting up on him and it's right where his claws are rounding a little bit going. And then there's this cast little shadow, form shadow right on that side there some of this burnt sienna blue maybe a little bit of extender here i like the extender because it streaks just a bit and uh, there we go so we'll streak that up there and while we have that let's take this it makes beautiful grays and let's just restate some of these grays here coming into his feathering here a little bit of that here. I'm gonna add just a touch more of the light color there, more so than what I see in the original, just because I can. But I wanna leave a, a few more little streaky marks here, his, his uh, leg feathers there. That's better, and maybe kick that highlight here, if that light's hitting. So we'll kick like that light is hitting that one just a bit there as well. And uh, just a bit through here. A few little marks and touches here. There. Okay, now let's um, go back. I'm going to go to a smaller brush here. And <laughs> look at how that one is. It's almost around. It's f it's feathered out so many times, painted with so many times. Let's go a little yellow, and Hansa yellow and white and yellow oxide here, and we'll just 
tap, tap, don't fill in, just kind of tap it around, kind of, kind of circular almost, or, or small little bits, change the color up around a bit here, but this is why I love that, because uh, see, I turn and roll the brush, that's why I love an older brush, because it makes, each, each time I turn the brush slightly, it makes a little different mark here, and so it's great, and we'll just add this up a bit here, yeah, just, it makes a slightly different little mark. And I like that because you don't, you know, the, the, the thing is about being a beautiful painter is you want to set up a whole bunch of different marks, what we call marks. They're not as much, like, when I was a decorative painter, we used to call them strokes. But here in, the, in Impressionism stuff, we call them marks, color marks. And so you want to, you don't want, let's just even add a little Dari light this time model those together. You don't want to set up a repetition of your marks. And so you get a little bit of difference. So I'm touching and you can see kind of rolling the brush a little bit, creating some different uh, marks there. Okay. And uh, here we'll pick up a little more light. And let's, he, he, got, he has this kind of heavier part of the foot that comes down shape bringing that down there that feeling down and i that's what i look for sometimes those marks that i can put that gives form and shape to something so i'll have it right out here that comes out that'll set this big part of his foot here and um then we'll go down to a burnt sienna i'm um, excuse me uh yellow oxide and a little dari light yellow and slip a little bit darker right in there, right in that side there. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of that Darulide yellow oxide right in there. Push that around, I took out too much there. So I get the opportunity to put it back in. We'll just touch some of that. And see, I'm, I touch and move different ways. I don't want those marks to be the same. Now, you could come back in here and just tap in some of those textures on there, which would look fantastic as well. And you can also do this. Use, and this is why I like to use the pointed knife. So sometimes when I feel I, I can come in here like this and roll that knife down and set a look in, that is, especially if the claw, and it's very rough looking, and his is very rough looking. I can just tap along here and set some of those, that roughness, the look of roughness to it. Now, some of you might be a little bit afraid to do this with the knife, but it does give you good knife practice here. A knife is a good way to make an unusual mark. Um... And that's what you try to do, is make these marks that, you know, uh, go in different directions and, and, and stuff. So they're not the same. You're not just tap, 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 tap. Everything is a little bit different oh, like that, but not down that far. That looks pretty good. I'll soften this edge a bit and down. Let's put a little bit of a half tone so I'll go burnt sienna and yellow here a little bit of a half tone right against that that form shadow there just to soften that so you, that light dark area there a little bit a little bit right there maybe a touch pulled across here it just says there it is now I could have I want to build that up one more time. Two lightish yellows, brightish yellows, a little bit of white. Let's build this just one more time, more texture. I'm building it for more texture more than anything else. There we go. There. That just gives that him claw just standing there, right? Which 
is what we want. Boom. A little more texture right there. And we'll take that burnt sienna, a little bit of blue, and I'll pull down into that. I'm redress my brush, pull down into that, just to give that feathery look to the edge of this. The feathers are coming up over his claw here. So there's that squeaky chair coming back again. There we go. That's good. Now let's uh, go back to some blue, a little bit of violet, a little bit of red here, and uh, restate some of these darks. Here, just to pick up some of those. Try not to breathe. There. And a little bit here. Down. Not the mics pick up. My dog is asleep in there. Just a barking away. Yep, and little bit over here and then I'll lighten so just like some of the colors that we used on the beak and stuff we'll just lighten maybe warm it slightly here um, and we'll look at that color one more time maybe it so we'll do a low light which is just a little bit lighter and that low light can come right in here a little mark okay and a low light right down along the top here. Low lights here, that, you know, about value seven, eight, somewhere around there. No lighter than that, because we need room for a highlight, the shine. So just a little bit on the warm, on the light side. And it these just kind of set a foundation for you to come back with a little bit of a shine, maybe a little edge of a shine and that's a little big so I'll straighten it up but I'll just do this first I'll just go through and tap right where I'm looking over where I see it on the photo and maybe just a little bit there and then I'm going to use the chisel of this brush to just kind of pull it out a bit pull it down and pull it out but like I said and you know so many times in working with these kinds of shines and stuff like that like we did the catch light on his eye remember i said we do it a little bit too big and then we paint it back down into position let me um that one is just a little bit too fanned out for what i want to do so let's just take a and we'll just push a little bit yeah that's that looks good just kind of just drag it slightly and then that gives that kind of contour highlight there just drag through that with a little bit of dark and it makes the shines more natural see and not just tapped on there drag those down this one will just take out a little bit there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. Now, I could have touch more light. Let's just uh, take some of this, model this up. Maybe just a touch more light here and there. Pull that through. Let it, just like this, just let the, the knife just lightly granulate over the surface and it'll leave these small little marks so we'll pull down slightly and just let the knife pick up the the textures of the paint that are already there does that make sense so and i like to do this kind of stuff after the paint has started to tack up so if yours is still really wet let it tack up a bit and then you can do these kind of marks to set in the final little bit of the bark and stuff on him there but I like that. So it's got some nice detail to it, but it's not too distracting from the main part of the painting. Whew, got that done. So that looks pretty good. I like how those, those claws and stuff come out. Now, okay, so back here we did the atmosphere, right? And I've got a little tiny blue spot right here. I don't know if you can really see that, but I wanna, I'm gonna take a little water, some of these colors right in here. 
and just kind of dirty that up a bit. I don't like that little bit of blue coming right there. So I just, just because it's, it, that helps with his depth. And if I really put a nice dark and a light right there, he will really advance. But I think he's advancing enough. But if we want to push back, now there's a couple things that we, we really got to consider. These colors here are pretty much different than some, you know, that's in this tree. And so he's sitting up in a branch of a tree. So to make this kind of realistic, we need to uh, include, some, if that makes sense, some of those trees back there. And maybe some of that burnt sienna blue of this tree that's right up here, or these colors that we see up there. We need to add a few of those colors back in here. Like there's going to be other trees that color. Maybe the idea of, because we said maybe a tree or so back here. The idea of some back up over there. And then we'll take some soft greens, burnt sienna's greens here. Scrub them around to... Uh, Give some rough shapes of the trees here. I used to, you know, go in there and just kind of like finely detailed and all this kind of stuff. And now I love the impressionism of just creating the colorful mark here. And, you know, we'll, the viewer will see trees here. Just creating the colorful mark and the edge of the transparency of the edges and stuff like that you know and uh, I like that now you know in the in the photo there's a lot darker colors in there and we can put some in you know we can add some darker blue burnt siennas into there and that brings them up but also what is happening when I do too much of this is I'll bring it too far forward because I'm creating too much dark because dark colors come forward so I have to be a little careful Okay, and then let's put some light back in there. Some green, some yellow, some white. Some of these lights, don't mix it up real well. Maybe a little burnt sienna in there. Don't mix it up real well. And we'll just add some light. But it gives a, it gives a feeling for the trees that, you know, we're gonna have here in that branch that's up into the front of the composition tying the front and the back of the painting together that's what i'm doing there and so those are just like real simple and you can uh come in like you know one of the things that i will do sometimes is just come in with the edge of the of the uh, painting knife here i always want to call it a palette knife because we call it palette knife for so many years but in actuality this is called a painting knife because it has that Z bend and then a handle. So I just put a few of those in. And uh, then we'll come back, lighten this up a little green. Some of these lights, maybe some of these yellows in here. And we'll just kind of carefully tap through. And what you want to do when you're setting trees and stuff like that into a landscape is you want to paint them, not just one solid ground, uh, you know, all the way across so you want to uh, uh, you know give them different different uh, heights or push back some a little bit take a little bit of that in other words so you see this undulation through there that makes it more realistic for the trees let's just grab some of this see and we'll just push some of this down some of this will come into a little hill here that'll come back I love that paper towel Makes it look like you know what you're doing there. And we'll work some of this tap up into those. Take away some of the fronts and push some of them back. Create this undulation, not a flat line across the front. Create an undulation of that, of those colors. Maybe uh, a little more burnt sienna, blue and green here. So here's the color I'm doing. I'm looking at this one. And uh, so I know I'm a little bit darker. Push some of that in. As you come forward and see, I want to I want to create some of these uh, dark areas, light and darks, 
you know, that because that creates highs and lows and stuff into the painting. Um, let's add a little extender. Now the extender just causes it to slide over the surface really easy. And I like how it makes it feel sometimes when I'm sliding over the surface here. It also makes it a little more transparent. So sometimes I have to come back a couple times here. But as I come forward here, here we'll paint this. As I come forward, I'm going to want to get some more darks and some more colors in here. So let's get some burnt sienna, some green in here. And uh, step some of those colors in here. And I'm just, see what I'm looking for is, is just some modely changes, some horizontals, some nice horizontals, but some modeling and some changes of the colors here so that it'll, it'll give me a great foundation to do grasses and stuff here. So, and remember we did a lot, when we did the blocking in, we did a lot of horizontals and verticals which we want to continue here, right up into the edges there of him. Some of these light colors. And see, I just want to create this mosaic. I like how Sandin always said in his, um, John Howard Sandin always said in his portrait videos, you create, to create a beautiful face, you create this mosaic of tones. And that just always spoke to me. And it speaks to me when I'm doing this. See, I create this mosaic of tones in here. And that is what's going to give the interest. So we're going to have greens and yellows and burnt siennas in here. And that is what's going to create the interest and allow us to set on some beautiful grasses. But we'll come in here a little deeper with some of this, some of this can come right down in here and hit some of these areas where those grasses and stuff are gonna be. Some of those tones. Now, there we go, just like that. And um, the mosaic of tones. And I used to, guys, I used to always just stress out over this kind of stuff, you know. And now I just put it on. See, and by having that other burnt sand and green stuff, look at how it advances his foot. So I'm going to make sure that I leave a little bit of that dark that's colliding up against this brighter yellow. And that just really brings it forward, doesn't it? it makes it look like you know what you're doing. And then we're going to just slide this. We'll add some more extender as I come back here, thin the color out, and let this mosaic here soften out as it goes back through there and you got to make sure that you even it on both sides so that that lightness and darkness evens out both sides here and uh, so we'll concentrate on that as well but as i come way forward here more greens more yellows more burnt siennas more stuff we can get heavier right up here and we can start some smaller little vertical movements too which will help us with our grasses and stuff up here. And again, look at how it pulls the hawk colors down here. Do you see that? That's one of the things I'm always looking for. I'm always talking to you guys, painting roses, painting everything there, harmony. Get harmony to your colors. Don't just isolate a color. That's one reason why we added, and I got some, <laughs> some great comments from you too. When I added some of those colors up into the sky, up into the clouds, you were like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> you thought I'd lost my mind. But it's harmony, and it always works. The, the rules of nature have always worked for me, and um, so I tend to follow them, but I follow that same thing. Even though I don't see that color, I add the, the color, I add the rules of harmony to it. So... Let's just, and you know, with the other Fergus Hawk that I uh, uh, did in the one DVD lesson that I have, really pretty painting with the uh, Sun Wonder Crisco Mountains behind him and stuff, and really enjoyed uh, that one. Uh, what I did was blur it off to the sides so that your eye focused in on the hawk. And um, 
Love that painting. Love that. Matter of fact, that painting sits in a couple rooms right over there in my office. It sits behind my office desk. I painted it and said, nope, never going anywhere. Not selling that one. I love it. So it sits in my office every day. I see it. And uh, love that painting. Love it. And so now this gives us a good foundation that for the grasses and stuff. A little bit of drippiness there for... for but we've got to, uh, we'll lighten a bit, so a little bit of yellow, some light, maybe a little bit atmospheric, so a little bit of blue into it, which creates that atmospheric color. And uh, we'll create some atmosphere of these lights here. Just coming back, some atmosphere of these right back through here. And... So it models in to some of these other colors. But we want these colors to lighten up and go back as they go back. So, But see, I like to work in like this. See all this beautiful color. And sometimes just a little corner of your brush. Just break up some of the horizontals with some verticals. And that just gives some more different movement to it. You can also slide your knife in there as well. And... As I come forward here, this is where I'm going to put on a little more paint right in here, even with my knife, and create some nice thick movement and maybe some nice uh, small vertical movement. The vertical movement will be larger here, smaller as we go back. We're creating the impression of movement of grasses and stuff like that. So a little bit of green here coming in right in that little spot right there. A little bit of that. Just building those colors. And uh, you, know, you can soften edges or do whatever you want to do here. Pull that down, soften that edge a bit. Okay. And then we can go into um, building some of the, uh, the grasses and stuff. Now... You've seen me before, and I don't think, yeah, I do. Uh, you've seen me before use these. These are old uh, basing brushes. They only cost a couple bucks. And I take them, and I even let the paint dry out in them so they become stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And you see me in a lot of westerns. This is the way I do the prairies and stuff. And you can build this up, some light yellows, stuff, maybe some yellows, and light yellows. And you build up different tones, and you come back in, and see... I can just build and build and build and start to, and this looks great. See, you, sometimes you push up and stuff, and, stuff, and what you're starting to do is build all the little grasses and marks. And those, and we want to keep them kind of small. You can do a few bigger ones and stuff down through here, maybe a few bigger marks of some grasses and stuff that'll, that'll come here. But overall, you want to keep it kind of, kind of small. Uh, I'm going to do that towards the end. Uh, but I want to put in a better movement. So I'm going to use like, and this is another one of my, and that's not my favorite, but I like to to grab and move colors like this with this. And I especially like to use the corner. This is my three quarter inch flat. And so I like to come in and I want to add some of this. We'll take some burnt sienna, a little bit of the yellow, touch of the white here. And I want to add this. This is just small little, you can hear me scraping it. I like that corner of that ferrule to scrape the edge here. And that gives some of the vertical movement that I want this grasses to have. And I don't put it down absolutely everywhere, guys. I let the, you know, some of the horizontal from my original, you know, take over. So here I might build a little bit there, but you still see a, a small horizontal. Then as you go back, your your marks just become little touches. Does that make sense? So you see this diminishing, and that's what we want. So I'll be a little heavier here, and then I get a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller. It's almost like doing those um, linear perspective. They get smaller and smaller, just little bits back here. And then as I come forward, I get a little longer, a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. And this sets in 
some of that nice movement of the grasses. And you can set up clumps of grasses like you see in the photo there. You can set up these clumps and stuff. I'm going to keep this very much understated, really understated. And the reason why is because I don't want this to be a painting about the landscape. I want this to be a painting about the bird. Now, some of you that are like, oh, maybe I, am I going to paint this or not? Now, you don't have to paint the bird. You can paint this as a beautiful landscape. You can put a lake in there, okay? You don't have to paint the bird. No, I'm kidding. You don't, you don't have to paint the bird. It, the, the hawk, he's wonderful because, boy, you got to learn how to do all that stuff, right? But, uh, you know, he, so he's, he's really good for you as an artist to learn how to do that stuff. But you don't, um, you don't necessarily have to do it. I'm going to increase my depth here. But look to other things. I mean, geez, there's so much stuff we as artists can do, you know. I'm going to look to add a little bit of this right in there. Look at how that just brings him forward, this bit of dark contrast. And then I'm going to break that up into some nice verticals right in there. Look at how that little bit of dark, boom, brings him right forward. Let's do that little bit of extender right in here. Let's, and so this is where I'm planning, where I'm putting my light and dark movements of my, of my grasses so that I can accentuate the painting. Does that make sense? And let's blur this out onto him so his feathery edges just kind of disappear there. Maybe a bit of this right down in here. And some of this goes right up in here. Right up in here. Make sure that you, whatever you do in here, you carry a little bit here. You don't want to create a tangent, what we call a tangent line of dark, right in here that doesn't appear going through him out into the other part of him here. I'm just going to put a little bit of that. And let's carry a bit of this over here. There goes a big loud motorcycle. And there we go, right up over here, right down to there. Look how that, that, that brings him to life here. And we'll add a bit of that dark right in there. There, it just kind of pulls your eye right in there, doesn't it? Now, so I'm going to keep this kind of simplistic. So I'll flip over, maybe not the lightest color that I'll do. I'm just going to drag a few of these little marks, little highlight marks of some of the grasses here through and just kind of scrub and whisper and let them fade away back out over here because I don't I want to keep the viewer right in here so I'm just going to let some of this start to fade away some of this can just pick up a little mark here and there see so you pick up the idea of the grasses here and they're mostly dark a few little few little marks Sometimes if I'll put marks in like this and then just blur them slightly right in there. Maybe even, you know, not above the branch, but this could be a fallen branch too, you know. So a few little marks of grasses there. I'm going to increase that in here a bit more. Just a... Some different movements, different ways. Sometimes just tap a little bit to create some of those. There we go, just highs and lows of these grasses. Let this just kind of fade away. A little scrubbing action here. Just fade away. You can have a little scrubbing action though. There we go, just like that. Boy, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. I'm looking through the atmospheric. Now, if I wanted to create, let me just show you this. Um, I'm going to rinse some of that out since the dry paint is already in there is enough. So, And then before I leave this brush, I fan it all out again. <laughs> and the brushes, this brush I got here was like 75 cents. 
and uh, you know, so I fan it all out again and let that dry like that. That makes just beautiful grasses, yeah, and stuff. So now, um, you, let me just show you. Let me show. I'm going to show you. I don't really need to do this, but sometime I'm going to show you this because I show you this in some other paintings. Um, and it's talked about how to create a better or, or more detailed atmosphere. So, you know, how to push something back here, a better atmosphere. Uh, so I look to the color that's right about in here, which is a gray blue. So, and I know how I made that. You know, we remember, we can go back a week and remember how I made that. It, one of my favorite ways, it's, it's blue, it's burnt sienna, sometimes a little bit of yellow, but white here. A lot of white. And so I'm, it's going to be a little bit grayer, just a bit grayer. And that's going to be pretty good. Now, I am going to, um, what I want to do is just take the majority of that out of my brush. And I want to put in some extender here, like this. Okay, And that extender that I put on is still wet here, by the way. So, and this is, this is what I do sometimes in some paintings to create atmosphere. I'll look to see, do I want to push something back a little bit more? And so I come right back up over, I'll start up into the sky and right down over the edge of the mountain here with this. This is a glaze, but what it's doing is putting a common color of the glaze. And so what it's, what it's doing there softly is pushing back that mountain. Do you see that? So if you get something... Now, I really don't need to do that too much, but it, let's say that you get something here, you want to push back that edge. You can see you can push back. Now, it'll look cloudy for a second, but it'll dry down. And so you can see, you know, that just pushes back that edge a little bit. Do you want to push this edge back or create the mist that's down in the valley between the two? You know, you can do that. Um, do you want to... Does, does this need to go back a little bit? You can even take this and streak it through some of the back, the very far back. You don't have to have that much, but streak some of it right back through here and you'll create a better distance here. See how that pushes that back just a little bit more? And so sometimes towards the end of the painting, I will do this. There are some mountains that... Uh, you know, you'll see in landscapes and stuff that I'll do this with very specifically to help my the, the feeling of my painting. Um, you know, and so I don't want to do too much here, though, because I kind of like how it, it just worked out that bad, that good. But you can see. And so this is this is basically, you know, maybe I want to add some atmosphere over these trees a bit. They're a bit much. So I'll just put a little bit of atmosphere, not over the whole thing, but just over them and see they go back a little bit. Any dark little mark, it might be a little bit too much. I can just tap it and send it to the back. So this is uh, really, it's, it's, it's a glaze, we call a glaze. And we make a very specific medium for this called glazing medium, that if you add that to this, color when you do this it just makes it magnificent because what glazing medium is designed to do is right now these the color because i'm using the extender or water when it evaporates the color comes down on top of each other well since it's so far back there it's not going to make a difference but glazing medium especially like if you're in your foreground and you want to glaze on some color what glazing medium does is it's a completely dry medium uh, and it's it, we call it an acrylic suspension medium it'll take the pigments and suspend it and from each other. So light passes through them. So you get this tremendous amount of depth. And so that's what glazing medium was designed for these kind of overpainting glazing techniques where you're coming in and adjusting some of the final look and stuff that you have to your painting. You know, how much you're gonna to do to it, that's up to you. But uh, it does work. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because I can and I haven't even painted on this an hour, so this is good. I'm gonna add a little more dark right in here. And that's just gonna advance that whole part of him right there. And this is now it's artist's choice, how much you wanna do here. 
you know, how much you want to carry that dark, make sure you carry some of that dark through so it doesn't create a tangent line in your painting. It just stops right here and doesn't carry through. We want, for, for visual depth, we want everything to kind of carry through. So I'll put some right through there and carry it through right in there, okay? And uh, I really like this right up in here, just what that did for him. And uh, we'll just carry some of that color out, even just with the corner of the brush, right out a bit there. And it just does so much. We're just going, boom, here he is, right up in front of you. Maybe a touch of it in here. But anyway, that looks pretty good. I pretty, I pretty much like him. Now, there is a, a bit of a cast shadow. I'll just take a nice dirty color. It's right here, so we're going to have a bit of a form shadow here, right there. And then, if you want, there's this cast shadow, which you just create the image there of that guy falling right down there. And that's pretty good. And maybe increase the darkness here of this form shadow right there. And, uh, yeah, a few little touches. So that's the cast shadow that's coming down through there. Look at it, you know, maybe, yeah, I could add a bit more dark right here into that part of that cast shadow, which will bring that wing even farther forward. Little things like that. I go through and look for little things. This is a cast shadow here, which I didn't add, which has to come over his feathers right there. Go through, make sure you're getting your cast shadows in and uh, form shadows. Form shadows rounded up. Cast shadows are the shadows that are for, that are created by that, el that object casting onto something below it. We'll just do that. That looks pretty good. I could... Um, one last little thing here. Hard, some, hard sometimes to stop a beautiful painting when you've had such a good time with it. And I've had a really good time painting with you guys with this. I know it's not so popular among it. You know, these types of videos are the ones that people don't watch all the way through. Because, you know, unless you're going to paint it. And they're not quite as popular. and uh, But I love painting like this with all of you so that you can see exactly what I'm going through and the thought process and stuff that I'm going through as I'm developing this. Because to me, that's the the goal, right? That's we got to give you guys those, those secrets here. Let's uh, shape up the back part of his tail here, right up underneath there, which that's a big kind of an area here which we could shape up a bit more here right in there and uh, let this come back together again a little more a little more shadow back up in there there are a few little streaks here there we go you a little bit, but I, I'm going to keep this very understated, not make it as perfect as we see on the other, because I want this to all be about here. I want this to come forward and it all be right about there. And along that line, let's come back one more little time and build this bit of light right here, big light cloud coming right down towards him. Right up in there. Just like that, maybe falls into this one right there. Just like that, that really brings him, boom, forward. We're taking artistic license and playing with nature just a bit. But see how you can just model and tap this over. Once you have this nice modeled ground, you can come back there and add those, and it just looks wonderful to it. There. So there he is. A um, little bit of yellow oxide right here where I just hit his foot too much. 
there. That, that works there, a little yellow oxide here. Like that. That works pretty good. There he is. I don't think I'll do any more to that. I think I'll just let that just sit there because it's supposed to be a painting about the hawk, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this. So this was, what, 145 and 145. So that's two, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours and then another hour. Right at an hour. An hour today. So four and a half hours to paint him. That's not too bad. Um... You know, and of course, there are other paintings which I will, you know, I put more depth and, and stuff into. But I have found with some of these wildlife, quicker wildlife like this, when I paint them as fast as I can through here, not only do I get a better life and energy to the painting, but I get a, a really nice, um, uh, I'm going to say casual look to it. I do see this line. See this line here? That's not there on him. And that line, my eye just caught that line. So two seconds, let me change that. Just break that up a bit here. Break that line up just a bit. Just like that. That That's better. And let that light carry through here. Into here. Yeah. There we go. Just like that. That's good. So four and a half hours or so, that's not too bad. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this longer lesson. This is what I want to start doing with this channel, painting some of these more in-depth, longer lessons with you. And then over on our Paint It Simply channel, you just type in Paint It Simply on YouTube, you'll go right over to that channel. Um, I want to uh, paint a lot of beginning lessons with you and give you all those tips and techniques, broken color, you know, how you do acrylic blending to how do we work with some of the more advanced mediums over here. So, you know, I like it so that advanced painters and intermediate painters can go back to then look at, uh, refresh some of those beginning techniques and beginners can come over here and look as to what their goal is and watch a beautiful painting come and know that you're going to reach there because I'm going to take you there. I'm going to give you everything that I have learned over the last 35, 40 years of painting and um, all these techniques and all of these things and uh, make a more beautiful place here in the world for us for all this art because this is just amazing all right so uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel please help us by sharing the videos supporting us with a membership or something like that because we do all this for free um and uh you know if you have questions and stuff just right away and i'll try to get to your answers and like i tell you all the time guys i read all of the questions every day i get up i go in and i and i read all the comments and everything i don't have to, I used to always, when the channel was smaller, answer every single one of you. And you can go back to the older videos and see that. But I just don't have that kind of time right now. Um, and uh, especially since I've become a more active grandfather since my son passed away. So I have to do that stuff too. So I have to uh, do a lot of things. But I love painting with you. And I thank you so much for joining us on the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell. And I'll see you guys on the next one. We have westerns, more landscapes, and that couchoua, that really big couchoua floral coming. has peaches and stuff like that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you on that one too, okay? Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.